And I just happened to be carrying a, a couple of six packs of, of beer up to my room after, after the ceremony. And uh, uh, Jim looked at me in the elevator and said, good beer. And I said, yeah, I like a good craft beer. He said, so do I. I'm working on a machine that's going to make, make brewing that at home really easy. Wow. So pour a glass of craft beer, we can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C-Certified Brewhead. And I am Scott Beer, cold beer enthusiast. And welcome to a, I guess, welcome to BAOS. And we have a very special guest today, George from Pico Brew. Sir, thank you very much for uh, yeah, coming. My pleasure. Thanks for coming by, Scott. George. Thank you. So this is something a little different for us. <laughs> uh, we didn't even know how to categorize this video. Um, so it's kind of like, basically, we're thinking this is more for the, for the home brewing. And uh, basically, Pico Brew, if you haven't heard, I'm going to let George do the talking here to tell you guys what these uh, gorgeous looking machines do, what they are, and what's going on here. Well, we started about seven years ago seven, uh, right. building a machine that we introduced about four years ago okay. called the Zymatic. Right. And it's a brew machine that home brewers may love because it lets the, the complex wort aspect of beer production is totally automated mm -hmm. with full control. Okay. And a lot of home brewers have, uh, have uh, gravitated towards that just because it's compact, ease of use, uh, simple to clean, as we say at Pico Brew, there's no art in scrubbing. That's so uh, that machine's done very, very well for us in the homebrew market, but also right. it's also resonated with the professional brewers. Right. They use it to do their pilot batches of beer now, developmental beers, that kind of thing. So let's let's just take a couple steps back, if that's okay. Sure. What is Pico Brew? Pico Brew was started uh, by three gentlemen, uh, two uh, in Seattle area and one in, I believe, in Southern California at the time. Um, two brothers, uh, Bill Mitchell lived in Seattle, and Jim Mitchell lived in uh, Southern California, and they were home brewers, avid home brewers. Uh, Bill uh, is a, was an executive at Microsoft, and uh, really liked home brewing. And his brother Jim ha has been in the food industry for years. In fact, his grandfather is Bill Mitchell. If you Google uh, uh, alcohol, uh, powdered alcohol actually, and Bill Mitchell, you'll find that he invented things like Tang, the powdered alcohol formula oh, that's registered at the Jim Foods, if I'm not mistaken, or is it been one of the big food companies. And, uh, and his background was kind of, uh, he kind of followed, uh, followed in his father, uh, grandfather's footsteps and, uh, and uh, did very well in that regard. Very cool. And Bill and Jim used to exchange these beer recipes back and forth. And of course, Bill would brew something that Jim said was great. He tried it in his own home brew system and it didn't come out the same. He'd right. sometimes bring a bottle of it down to Jim and Jim would scratch his head and go, you know, there's gotta be a better way of doing this. And so they came up with the idea of building a machine that would let them, with the latest technology, have full control of the wart production, the flow, the temperature, the timing. Uh, and if they could do that in a reasonably compact appliance, they figured that would be great for home brewers. Right. As they started developing that, and along with another partner that they brought in, uh, Abby Geiger, who was also in Microsoft's manufacturing division, okay. uh, he knew how doing. to get things done. Yeah. And so they built a series of these prototypes. And as they were building the prototypes, they started to show these to the local breweries out on the West Coast. And they started playing with them and said, hey, wait a minute, this is more than a home brewing machine. This is a pro machine. And we want these things to be able to do our developmental beers. Um, I think it was, uh, I think it was Alicia at the time that was spending like three or $400 on doing a pilot batch of beer. They do right. 10, 15 you know, barrels of beer and uh, find out that uh, you know, it was either no good or something they wanted to change in a small degree. So they started using this to tweak their beers and, and, uh, and worked on pilot batches. Fantastic. And, and Andy Johnson, who ultimately joined the company, came in as a skeptical home brewer one day and said, ah, this thing maybe works, maybe it doesn't. They gave it to her to play with. She brewed a few, few beers on it, and I think it was in 2013, she won the AHA Home Brewer of the Year Award wow. on a beer she made on the Zymatic. So okay. after that, we sort of put that into production and uh, did very well with the Zymatic. And based on the knowledge we had of the Zymatic, uh, we went a little bit further and said, you know, there's a market out there for people that love craft beer, but don't necessarily want to have all this complex, te complex technology in their basement. Uh, don't want to be able to have to go out and figure out where their latest, you know, where the grain supply stores are, have to drive halfway across town or halfway across the state to get them. Uh, we figured there was a way of being able to have something a little bit more compact that they could enjoy fresh craft beer at home. And while we're at it, why don't we partner with breweries all around the world? Because part of one of the biggest problems with beer distribution is that you don't necessarily have the best beers at your local supermarket. So what if we could give you a choice of a worldwide selection of beers 
that are guaranteed fresh because they're, you're making it. They're not dusty bottles sitting on a shelf somewhere. Right, right. and they're customized by the breweries for the machine. Exactly. Very, very cool. And you're an investor in the company, is that correct? I am. Yes. I, I, just, I, just to show you, because know, you oh, found him. Full, you've, full uh, disclosure, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, it's a hilarious story. I met, I met Jim Mitchell at a wedding uh, in the Boston area uh, back in 2010. And I just happened to be carrying a, a couple of six packs of, of beer up to my room after, after the ceremony. And uh, uh, Jim looked at me in the elevator and said, good beer. And I said, yeah, I like a good craft beer. He said, so do I. I'm working on a machine that's going to make, make brewing that at home really easy. Wow. And, you're like, and uh, so that, that, that tweaked my imagination yeah. and knocked out a further conversation. And we stayed up till we small hours of the morning. He kind of disclosed a little bit about what was going on and suggested I talk a little bit more with Bill and the guys. And that's how I got involved with Beagle Brew. Nice. Fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah, what are these two beautiful machines we have sitting behind us? Well, as I said, the Zymatic, it was a wonderful machine and is a great machine. It's still a flagship machine and pro machine. If, you're, you know, if you want to control the entire brewing process, mm -hmm. the front end of the machine, we have our own front end, but you can import beer recipes from Beersmith or any other software out there. So it's a, it's a pro design system, but obviously you've got to have some reasonably good knowledge about brewing. Mm -hmm, right. This is Pico Pro that we introduced uh, after the Zymatic. This has been shipping for about a year now. And uh, this machine is designed to take that guesswork out of it, but still give you the ability to enjoy fresh craft beer at home. Right. And the way this works is our, our professional machine does about two and a half gallons of beer uh, every time, and it does it in a five-gallon corny keg. The standard keg you would find, yeah. you see them wheeling Coca-Cola syrup kegs into the restaurants and out again, those standard yeah. corny kegs. We cut a little bit off the bottom to pick up tubes so the truck doesn't come up with right, the, right, 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 right. rack from it. But essentially, we took that same design and made a smaller keg. You're always going to get five liters of finished beer every time you brew on this machine. Amazing. Okay? And you do it with a little bit of a different attitude than, than the Zymatic. The Zymatic, you go and source your own grains and hops. Here, we ship to you this little box, which is called the Pico Pack. And in here are everything you need to be able to brew that beer, other than the liquid itself, the water. So we ship you a nice little label so you know what your beer looks like when you take it to a party and <laughs> wrap yes. it away. So actually, what we're going to be brewing today is the Double Trouble Prison Break Pilsner. Double Trouble are a Toronto-based brewery. So okay. we chose this one from the uh, variety of packs just because we figured let's sort, uh, support a Toronto brewery. And it's super, super cool that uh, you, know, you guys have partnered with them to be able to create it. Plus, the fact that you can make a pills on the machine. We're super, super curious cool. to see yeah. how that goes down. Sure. We've never there. messed around with lager styles before, so it's... Uh, yeah, so I thought this would be a fun one yeah. for people to see. Sorry, yeah, to absolutely. That. Yes, continue. So, yeah, in here, uh, like our cymatic machine, we, we have a grain and hops compartments that are all compartmentalized in, in one, air, one area, which we call a stock filter here. Mm -hmm. You drop your grains and your hops in here typically, but in this case, everything's prepackaged. So this is your grains already pre-measured for you. And it's a biodegradable container. So all I you like literally that. do is take this plastic off, and I just want to lift the lid off here for yeah, a second yeah, to show you how it works. There's a little RFID chip here. We would typically cut the plastic off, but we'll only actually brew a little bit later here. But we'll just drop this in here, and you have the hops compartment, which is separate. We did this for two reasons, because first of all, if you want to keep the thing a little bit longer before you brew, it's a good idea to put this in, the, in a cool place, a freezer or something, just to preserve your hops. And there's a little hops cradle that goes on here. I've got, this typically just supports it. You just put this on and put this in the back here. Okay. And once you've done that, you can't reverse it. That's the other beautiful thing about this. Yeah, you can't get it wrong. You it's can't idiot get it wrong. Idiot yeah, person. It really is. So you put your cover back on, that's just yes. a little steam deflector okay. that we just put on here to make sure your, your temperature is as consistent as possible going through the machine. Fantastic. And you, at that point, slide it in place. It reads that recipe going in. We should turn the machines on, shouldn't we? Yes. <laughs> so it reads the recipe, it will read the recipe going Sorry. in. If it senses that Wi-Fi, it probably won't at the moment, but if it, mm -hmm. if it would, it would sense that Wi-Fi account, yeah. know that that beer is on your account, and set this machine up to be able to wow. brew that particular beer. The only thing you still have to do, obviously, is add water. And you add a little bit of water in a reservoir up here, because we have a steam engine in here. Oh. And one of the cool things about the Pico is it heats up so quickly, and so consistently with the steam engine, that you're able to brew a beer in about an average of about two to two and a half hours on this machine. It's right. about, about half the time I do uh, it half, yeah. takes to exactly. do a full dash. Yeah. Exactly. But no mess. 
with no mess. Right. Yes. And so that's just going to run the steam engine. You put the, a keg, a prescribed amount of water into this keg for each recipe. Uh, Usually about roughly uh, five and a half liters of water is going to go in here. And you're going to ultimately turn the machine on. It will pump water from here, circulate it through the machine in each of the compartments. First, no matter what temperature the water is to start with, it'll bring it up to your mashing temperature. Amazing. It'll hit the mashing compartment first. Then it'll It'll drain that and, and circulate a uh, temperature at about 153 degrees, 54 degrees, through a clear area in the back of that compartment and bring it up to a boiling temperature of about 203, 204. Mm -hmm. And then it'll actually hit the hops compartments in the back, just like our Prozymatic does. And at that point in time, when the hops are finished, it drains everything out, puts it in the keg, and all you have to do as an end user is put a keg seal on this keg and let it sit overnight and come down to room temperature naturally. Wow. And a lot of people are skeptical about that, but right. it's a sterile environment. It really is at that point right. in time. Can that so get in, there's no, uh, like, if you're boiling it, we're, we're trying to cool the, like, a, a huge open pot. Right. Of, like, five gallons of beer, which takes some time without a water chiller. Right. Yeah. yeah. And if you cool. wanted to, I mean, if you're really, you know, if you're really terrified of doing it that way, mm -hmm. There's nothing to prevent you from putting this into an ice bucket right. or anything else right. and getting you it down. To help the process along a little bit. But there isn't a need to do need that. To, right. you know, we even do this on the Zymatic. The Zymatic, we actually have a video online as to how to use an, an inline immersion chiller on the Zymatic. Mm -hmm. But 99% of the beers ever done on the Zymatic are never oh, done yeah. that way. They so just let the beer sit up to about 18 to 20 hours, 18 hours for sure, yep. mm -hmm. and, and then just pitch your yeast. Okay. And, and, let, you and you're going to, yeah, okay. pitch your yeast and ferment within the same keg. Right, okay. okay. And we've developed yeast, and we also, we also developed a, a fermenting process which lets you as a user decide how you want to ferment. You can ferment at a standard temperature, standard fermentation, which is anywhere between uh, 61 to 73 degrees for standard fermentation, or if you can find a warmer spot in your home, from 75 to about 80 80, degrees, 84, 84 yeah. degrees, you can actually do fast fermentation, oh. where there will be some pressure applied to the yeast, and also the heat will have the yeast react in an optimal way that will actually ferment just quicker. It will reduce your time by about 40%, 40 to 50%. The yeast comes in the pack as well, correct? Exactly. Yeah. The two th one thing I didn't show you in each pack is a little box. And in this, in this, here's your yeast pack that you're going to sprinkle in. Yep. Um, and then what you're going to do as well, there's a little sugar pack here because we let you naturally carve in the beer if mm -hmm. you want, or you can sugar carve. We'll talk about that in a second because mm -hmm. you rack over to another keg to do your sugar cart. Right. In some cases, beers require dry hopping. Like yes, I was about to ask about that. Yes. There's your packets. Nice. Already sealed, all ready Same. to go. Nice. So after oh, about like after yeah. about four <laughs> days of fermentation, what you're gonna do is just pop this open for a second, toss those in like a tea bag, oh, close them back up again, let it go. Uh, and it's your choice whether you want to whether you want to dry hop either in the uh, in the in the fermenting cake or even in the serving cake. You can do I'll that too. You can dry hop while it's, uh, right. You're in control. Right. That was one of my questions. How much can you customize? I mean, the idea would be if you purchase one of these packs, if you want to keep it true to recipe, you just follow the instructions. But you can, and you know what? I want to dry hop pills now. And then you can maybe double up on the hops side your own. You can do that to a degree. And there's another thing we did for people that really wanted to go beyond just the selection of beers that we offer. And there's hundreds of beers around the world that you can choose from now. There's also an interface on our software called Freestyle Pico Packs. Right. Where you can go in and you can design your own bespoke beer. Oh, cool. Have us make it for you. We'll ship you. It comes in, comes all sealed. All the ingredients you specified are in here, mm -hmm. and you can try that particular beer, brew it, and now it's a beer you can make for maybe a party function or friends. Right. That's totally your name on it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so good. Um, so okay. So before we move on to the brewing, so this is the Pico Pro. This is the Pico Pro, and which is the was the main one, but we also have. We also have another machine here. Uh, the one thing I should just mention, though, yes, is that course, there's yeah. a second keg sitting here as well. The Pico Pro ships with two kegs, two identical kegs. And there's a ball lock connector that goes, uh, uh, there's a connector that goes from here, just a tra transfer tube, okay. where after fermentation is complete, after X number of days, mm -hmm. you rack over to this particular keg, and then you carbonate and serve within that particular keg. The gotcha. machine will do the push for you as well. The machine acts as a pump and will actually pump your beer across, or you can seal to it across whatever way, whatever you want to do. It's a pro setup, so you can do it any way you like. So this is the step down from the Zymatic, correct? It's a step in a in totally different, different dimension okay, almost. Let's call it really it is. For someone that wants the convenience of, of having a compact device on the countertop, 
and have the ability to create to drink great craft beer from all around the world. That's what this machine is about. It's a coffee maker. Yeah, it's what yeah. you call the Keurig of the uh, the craft beer. It's, it's been referred to as yeah. that. And in, in one respect, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of accurate. Although people then think it's like a two minute solution to get right. a beer, and it's not. Right. But it's not a two week solution to drink a beer as well. Right. Because if you've got more cakes, you can have more beers in production at any given time. Right. Remember, the time on the machine to brew is only two and a half hours. Right. So if I've got more cakes, then I've got that Three whole beer production want, right. Exactly. So how long does it ferment for? So if you're going to leave it in the fermenting keg, how long would you let it do Typical that? Typical fermentation. I would typically do yeah. fast fermentation. Yeah, so I'm, I'm down to somewhere between four to seven days on fast fermentation, okay. usually, mm -hmm. on most of my beer. And then do you have the option of the CO2, uh, like if it's like sugar yeah. carbing, can you like force carbonate if you don't even want to wait and you're just going to be like that? You certainly can. We have well, options on both machines. Well, we have, this is, we assume you're going to CO2 on this, but we do provide the sugar packs so you can naturally carb right. if you want. Yep. Um, but both machines, you can do the sugar, the, the uh, the CO2 if you wish to do that. Amazing. Yeah. And just one other thing I should yeah. mention too is that the machine, while it does uh, beer, it also happens to do sous vide cooking as well. Right. <laughs> it's a sous vide machine. It has a mode, you can go into it, and you can literally just, uh, well, I have to choose a network here, but you can go into the, you can go into the setup mode and you can actually go into sous vide, pick your time and your temperature, put your favorite meats in here, wow. and do incredible sous vide. So it's a kitchen appliance in that right. But because it's not a direct water connection in the kitchen, you can be sous vide anywhere or brewing beer anywhere. It right. doesn't even have to sit on your countertop. Right, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, do we want to talk? Sorry, to interrupt. Go. No problem. So yeah, exactly. What we want. For, so we introduced the Pico C a couple yep. of years ago, and a Pico Pro rather a couple of years ago, and we mm -hmm. came up with a wonderful new machine called Pico C, right. which is basically to, almost like the Pico Pro, except we've simplified a couple of things and dropped the cost and a couple of changes. First of all, there's a different keg on here. Yes. So we've eliminated the ball locks right. because we even thought that for a lot of consumers, even a ball lock connector was somewhat daunting. You've got to take them apart. You've got to clean take the insides. Them, take the right. insides. Yeah. You can sometimes scrape your wrist when you're trying to right. clean around right. the top on the inside. Check this out. Here's the way the Pico C is configured. And by the way, there's connection hoses on this which are impossible to get wrong. <laughs> you can't put the wrong uh, hose in the wrong hole. And when you want to clean this and get inside it, it's so simple. There's what it is. Wow. It's a pot. Okay? Fully Amazing. dishwasher compatible. And this, if you want to clean it, is just a matter of doing a little pull, and that can come off, be cleaned very easily. Even, it come, even this comes apart, a little filter on the back. Fantastic. Goes into cleaning solution very quickly. So it's a real like easy one to hear. For Gets beginners. put back together again. If you can still make great beer. Absolutely. With a little bit less pressure, a little bit less stress. A little bit less stress. Same, same Pico packs. It uses exactly the same Pico pack, does exactly the same capacity. Mm -hmm. We give you a little bit of a simpler keg to rack over to. This is a little kind of, a, we call it a Heine keg, just because yeah, yeah, it's the yeah. same size. But it's a, it's a reusable keg. You put a plug on the top, you can naturally carve on this. We have, each keg comes with a secondary plug where you can put a CO2 regulator on here, oh, okay. put a cartridge on it as well. So yep. if you want a fast carve, you yeah. can as well. And there are some techniques that are discussed as well about fast carving, where you can do fast carving in like even 30, 40 minutes kind of thing with uh, carb stones. And mm -hmm. yeah. again, your, your options if you want to be able to do that. That's a really cool party choice. You brew your own beer, you custom made in your little honey keg, bring it to the party, Make tap, a label ready to or go, put for a label on it. Yeah. Super cool. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, so all of this talk, uh, Joe, is kind of making you want to brew a beer. Brew a beer? <laughs> Shall we? Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Process. We 
have. And uh, Uncle George, what is next, sir? Well, as we were, we've got the brew process, this is my machine here, which yes. is your machine. It's actually brewing. We've got to show this in a reasonable time. Yes, we have uh, <laughs> yeah. condensed. Condensed yeah. for you guys. So this is actually one you prepared earlier. It's a cooking show over here. <laughs> I did. Uh, and uh, so this is actually the double trouble. Now we have a pour handle. Nice. So what we want to do is just rotate that. Yeah. And we're going to start having okay. a beer. Okay. This is sick. I promise. Okay. This is crazy. So is there anything special that it does? Like, is this difficult to brew a pill? You got a lot of head on that, but that's, <laughs> a, that's okay. It's because we're in a glass where we haven't even on an angle there. And have a, is that special an angle? <laughs> Let's try a little bit with that. There we go. Smells great. Smell that. Is it anything um, sure. that they that has to be done different? Because this is a pilsner, and I know that's like something that has a like Scott was saying before that it's like we a round out of course. I know I'm not an expert on how they develop pico packs, but I can tell you Jim Mitchell and the crew at Pico Brew are very adamant about uh, about trying to get that experience in a, pr a process that's totally done within the pico machine itself. Right. So gotcha. there's nothing done here by me that I haven't described. Right. It's, it's, it's completely from the machine directly. Like here. internal. Yep. Very cool. And one thing I was actually, uh, we thought of, I forgot to mention it to you all, we were thinking about on the way here was, I would love to do it side by side, which we should right, do. Right, with the actual. It, with a can yeah. of, of uh, Double Trouble, that's why we should do a video. Yeah, sure. Um, and have you ever done that? Uh, as a matter of fact, that's exactly how the, every brewery that has their beer on brewmarketplace.com, where you go to get your beers, yeah. and choose your Pico Packs, the deal we have with every brewery is that they have to prior approve a beer produced on a Pico machine mm -hmm. uh, before we're able to uh, offer it for sale. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how we're smart. guaranteeing you that tap experience. Right. And unless you as a user use some sort of sulfated water or right. don't follow cleansing processes properly, you're going to get the same result time right. after time. Right. So may I pour one here? Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's Please. Give this a shot. May as well kill the cake while it's going. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So it's nice and it's got the, a little bit of haze, which is something that uh, personally appeals to me. Fantastic. There you go. Wow. It smells like a pilsner. Yeah. Certainly fresh. Absolutely. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. 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 It's great. Mm -hmm. I haven't had one of the, these for a while, but uh, have you had one recently? Like as far as like. I've had a pilsner recently. Yeah. I mean, not one of these pilsners, but it's certainly. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a, like a nice little sweet peachiness there. Yeah. Nice and like dusty. Mm -hmm. Malty, really uh, smooth, creamy consistency. Yeah, great head on it. Great nose too. A little floral, a little sweet. Mm. Now I really wanted to do side by side. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and done in under two weeks. Yeah, that's crazy. It's fantastic. Yeah. So I guess basically you could literally in the same day almost if you had multiple kegs you could like have a whole bunch you could like just keep brewing. In yeah. Your head, in fact, what I do is once I've got my countertop set up, I'll often do maybe two brews a night. It's very easy to do that. I mean, yeah. you start at you know start at six or seven and you're done by eleven or twelve and it's you know perfect it's, timing. Yeah. yeah. So easy. Yeah. When it's great for weekends if somebody just yeah. has you know. Sunday afternoon beer. Uh, <laughs> brew it up for the next bit. I exactly. love it. Alrighty, so we've cleaned. And we're just going to wrap it up, George. So uh, we were just talking off camera about the Pico packs themselves. Yeah. Um, so you're just saying they're around, is it like 19 to 29 US? Pico packs pack? range from 20 from 1995 to 2095 for the beer packs. Yep. Uh, we also do kombucha teas. Oh, ooh, and nice. they're, I think they're all 14.95 if I'm not mistaken. Very, okay. very good. Yeah. So as far as like value is concerned, if you're paying, you know, say 20 bucks for the equivalent of one of these bad boys, which is five liters. Yeah. I mean, that's... Uh, if, if you're a budget it. shopper there with the calculator, I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> say it's going to be less at buying retail price on our Pico packs. Right. It's going to be fresher, yeah. and you're going to have greater variety, and you're going to have the kind of fun we had today right. without the mess. I mean, you're still brewing a great beer at home. You've got yeah. a certain sense of accomplishment yeah. that you're doing it. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things, if you are crunching the numbers on our product, is to look at very carefully what we offer on Brew Marketplace and specials. Mm -hmm. We've always got a beer coming up for sale. So if you plan a little bit ahead about what beers you like, and you see those beers come up and you bring them in that way, yeah. you can save serious money right off the top right. and still be brewing great beers. Nice. Fantastic. And like it was, we were also just saying as well, like the, the fact that the owners of the company or the founders are very much just wanting to get good beer and fresh beer into the hands of, of people. The genesis of our company are three guys love craft beer 
and couldn't stand the fact that they were getting mediocre beers when they went out to buy beer, mm -hmm. it had been on the shelf too long, or if they were trying to brew their own beers, they couldn't get consistency and reliability and the taste they wanted each time. That's the genesis of our company. Mm -hmm. And everything we built and every all the technology we've developed is, is, is to achieve that objective. Right. And so if you look at the cost of these machines, the engineering that went into them, and the fact that we're the guys that are actually built these things and invented the process and mm -hmm. have the patents behind it. Other people have tried to copy us, and I don't think very many people have even delivered. There's a couple of million dollars of people's Kickstarter and Indiegogo money out there right now on product they'll probably mm -hmm. never even see, and if they ever right. do, it'll be pretty disappointing beer, we can guarantee you. Right. But in any event, you know, this is, this is a machine that ships, and it's a product that really does work, and you've tasted the results today. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. It's fantastic. Um, I was going to say, if the, so if a brewery is watching this, and they want to have, they want to see their, you know, flagship beer in a Pico pack, yeah. How can they do that? They can do that by going right on our website, and there's a link on the menu page that says Brewery Sign Up. And not only can they offer their current beers available, but they can offer award-winning beers they have brewed in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, uh, Brewbaker in Berlin, they have a gold, gold medal beers from 2010, 2008. Those beers aren't even offered by them at the moment because mm -hmm. you can only do beer you know, yeah, keep it fresh for seasonally. Yeah. But now, this is kind of like the seed bank for beer in a way. Right. Because now somebody can <laughs> order that beer and have that great beer that they like right. from a particular era available on the Pico machine. Cool. Yeah. I never thought of it like that. That's, That's really super cool. sick. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Time capsule. Yeah. 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 Time, time capsule for beer. Yeah. <laughs> um, where can people find Pico online? So if they want to learn more about it. And PicoBrew.com is, and is the spot. PicoBrew.com. Uh, and social media? I think it was Pico Brew Beer on Instagram. I believe it is. Yeah. And if you go on the Pico Brew website, at the bottom you can see the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, yeah. Twitter, and all the all works. the Twitty social stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, George, sir, thank you very much for your time and for hey, awesome. It was great. Thanks so much. No no much. Really appreciate it. So, guys, if you're watching this long and you enjoy the video, you know you can check us a thumbs up, show us you love that shit. Uh, hit subscribe down below. Hit the notification bell so you know what's going on. We love new videos. Uh, follow us on social media at BAOS Podcast if you want to hear the long form audio. Check out Apple Podcasts, uh, TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Play, all that good stuff. And That's buy it. Buy yourself oh. one of those Pico machines. <laughs> you guys, guys. Need one. you're going to need one right here. Yeah. All right, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Get it Cheers. In. Yeah.